Hi everybody, Jo here again. How are you doing? How's it been? It's probably been about a week since we last had a catch-up, so I thought it was about time we had um, coffee or a brew, as we like to call it here, and um, we'll just have a little catch-up. Now, last time we got together, we made a tag and a couple of uh, ladies were saying about Christmas tags. Obviously, I got all enthusiastic saying I can't wait to make Christmas tags. So I thought what an ideal thing to come back and do will be to just make a Christmas tag with you. Now, this is the design I'm going to do. And the aim here is something that's very quick and easy to reproduce. But also something that would I could change the colours up a bit. Um, I mean, I like to have a theme for Christmas. I don't know about you. I've gone traditional here with sorts of reds and greens, but I'm thinking I could mix it up with a bit of pink, a bit of purple, and um, some blue around the edge instead. Again, like every time, you know, lots of ideas. So um, I must say, I've had one of those annoying coughs this last week. <clears throat> so if I start, uh, my voice goes a bit. I'm very sorry. Um, it's just gone a bit croaky. I think it's just the change in the air. It's sort of here in the UK, we've gone a bit autumnal and I think there's probably going to be a lot of colds and things going around, but it's not the best time to have a bit of a cough, is it, because of old COVID? Um, so anyway, so do excuse me if I go a bit funny. <laughs> Mind you, you're probably used to that by now. You're used to me, aren't you? <clears throat> so what we'll do is I'm starting with a tag. Now, I did show you last time how you could cut your own tag. This one is, I think it's a Tim Holtz die, and I just find it easier to run out quite a few tags. Now, these I find are lovely. A, to either put on presents. I mean, I find um, at Christmas, if you give somebody a plant or some uh, flowers, um, isn't it nice just to put a, a, a tag on it, you know, rather than a card? So that's what we're going for. Now, nice, quick and easy to start. So we're going to use very little equipment for this. We're just going to take the colour off the background. Now, you could just use your stencil brushes and brush some ink across. I'm just going to use Billy Brayer here and we're just going to soften the ink on our blending mat and I'm just literally going to come from the bottom, pick that ink back up and then in from the top. And I might even just go up and down that side. I mean, I've only inked him up once, look. I just want to take that whiteness off and you know what? That'll do for me. And in a way, it's a great way of practising your brayering. As you know, I never used to be a big fan of Billy, but he's, he's won me over, he has. So, let's clean that up a bit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edge it next. And I'm going to go for the darker green, and that's the mold lawn. And very simply, again, now these are things you could do in batch. I mean, once you've inked Billy up, you know, you could ink two or three of... Um, of your tags and actually stamp them up this will be great to do batch uh, tag making so we're just going to add some of the darker ink and I'm just going to start in the bottom corner and very quickly again if you remember I only ink up on the corners um, really because I want the corners darker oh we've got little dog hair then from Eric he likes to make an appearance. I've just had him out, actually. Um, I sort of <laughs> rushed him back to do this. <laughs> Realised it was so long since we'd had a catch-up. I hope you're keeping okay. Um, like I said, we've gone a bit autumnal here. Depending where you are, depend on what sort of weather you're having. I know we're lucky, really. You know, we don't get any of the, the really adverse conditions like some of you do. So um, I certainly won't complain about our weather. So that's the basis of my, my tag. And again, how lovely is that? So quick and easy. Like I say, at Christmas, you do want things that are quick and easy. But also for me, they've got to be enjoyable. Now I'm just going to get my stamping mat, aka magazine and copy of paper. And I'm going to use this um, Willow Arch stamp. Now, the Willow Arch stamp is beautiful and you can stamp it at the top of a tag. But for me, it's what to do with this. You could create a scene here, but I want this to be a quick, easy tag. So that's why we're coming in from the side. And I'm just, so many uses you can do with this. You can do it at the bottom as well. You can make a wreath with it. And as you know, I love my wreath cards. But we're just going to come in from the side here. Just to make a bit of a focal point with it. 
and again it's an outline stamp so it doesn't need a great deal now don't worry that I've got gaps here because I'm going to fill those in and what I'm going to use next is um, this beautiful little Lavinia I brought out this little uh, fur cone these pound stamps I know I keep saying it but you know such good worker stamps and you can make a whole wreath out of these pound stamps can't get the lid off my ink. Has anybody noticed that since they changed? <laughs> I know the ink, the lids are better. The old ones, people used to get ink on the hands. So it is better that they're separate, but sometimes I have trouble getting them off. So we'll have a couple of fur cones, maybe three, but we don't want them to look too symmetrical, do we? So if we put one there, one there, and let's change the angle, have one there. And we're going to have one at the bottom here, just a lone little fur cone, like that. And again, like I say, if you've got two or three of these, you could you would just ink and uh, stamp the fur cones on all of them. And then the next one we're going to do is a little holly leaf, which again, another little pound stamp. Now this one we're going to use our green. So that Versafine Claire was the acorn, the brown. So we're going to come for a shady lady and we're going to have some green. So let's add our holly leaves. And again, you want to go round but alter your direction. We almost want to get this nice shape. So think a bit about if you were creating this wreath as a florist. So that's the outside done and I have left space because I'm going to come in with some berries. So I don't want to fill the whole thing with, with holly. I do want a bit of space for my berries. Now let's just join these two in here. That's a nice clump there. And then maybe we'll just have... And again, you can do two or three of these and you never do them the same. I like that shape. I'm thinking a few berries and that'll be lovely. So we'll get rid of the holly. Again, another little pound stamp. Change the colour. Now the red I'm using is glamorous. It's quite a bright red. There is a deeper red. I forget what colour that is. Is it Chianti? I'm not sure. There is a deeper colour, but depending which red you want to go for. So I'm thinking we'll have a few there. I just liked the, the brightness of this. And again with this, I ink it on the, the side here because I don't want all of that stem so if I use the corner of my ink pad the stem tends not to uh, ink up and again if you just want one or two just be mindful of just inking up those let's just pop one there just as though it's heading off and see if we can just have an odd bit of same up here look see how that's a bit green See what I mean if I turn it round? For me, it just looks lacking some red there. What do you think? Do you agree with me? And also just here. See if we can just get one in there. Yeah, I think that, that flows better. Just there. And then stop. No pizzas. Don't want to go over the top. Now, how quick was that? Now, I must admit, I really love that. I mean, you could leave that as it is. But I think we're just going to do a little bit of stamping and I'm going to come in back with the mowed lawn and I'm going to use this Spirit of Christmas verse sentiment. Now on my original I did first generation but I'm, I think I'm going to do first and second. Now what I haven't done is what I normally do is on the back of my stamp, especially a verse stamp, I'll put an arrow so I know which way up it is. Let's hope I've put the arrow the right way up. Yes. Hmm. That would be a bit of a bit of a faux pas, wouldn't it? So at least I know when I'm doing this which way up it is. Yeah, I think second generation actually I might prefer. Let's go for one there. And I'm not going to get these equidistant. So one at the top. And let's go for that edge. 
need a little bit there, don't we? Just a little oh, second generation, just there. Yeah. Just almost makes it look like it's from a larger piece of um, backing paper, doesn't it? That you've now you could colour these berries red, but for me, I think there's enough red on there. So what I'm thinking, out with my colouring pencils, and I just want to add a little bit of brown, not a lot, and again, I'm not, it's just speed colouring, just to see how that looks better, brown and not green. Just gives a bit more detail to these fir cones. And again, we're thinking we haven't got all the time in the world. And just on a couple of branches, look, I'm just going to pick out the... You don't have to do all of them just gives the design a bit of depth you see that and then with the black I could get my charcoal pencils out to ground it but you know what I'm just going to use the black on my pencil it's all it needs like I say I think in Christmas we've not got all the time in the world now what I would do then is just get you could again if you like it like that leave it like that I just like that they're full bleaching I love the speckledness of the of adding some water with the fan brush as I say my fan brush is in my pot of water and stays there all day every day last thing I do is empty it first thing when I come into my craft room fill it up but if you're not a fan of the mottle sort of full bleaching effect by all means just leave it with solid colour now it will full bleach my words but again I like that I just want to make it look almost like a vintage background now at home you would leave it to dry but obviously you know you don't want to wait while that dries so we'll just dab it with some kitchen roll and we'll give it a quick blast with the heat tool so again remember when you heat your car from the front Always turn it over, heat from the back. Now I must admit the back of my cards tags will always end up like that. So what I would do is just go all the way. Let's go for the lighter colour. And I would make it look like the back of my tag was supposed to be so I would do that and then get my verse again handy having that arrow look and just do a little bit and again this is in the lighter colour turn it round right across the bottom there and then to finish off what I would do is with my brush pick up a little bit of that that's on my mat just gently flick it you don't need a lot and then you've got enough room to write your message can you see that but you've made it look like the back of that tag has a been decorated nicely so it matches but b the fact if you've got ink on it it now looks like part of the design like it was supposed to be there so let's just heat that sorry leaning across you So I'm really happy with that. I think that's such a lovely, lovely tag. Now, a few more little finishing off tricks. Now, in comes the white Posca. You know I love my white Posca. So the first thing is this finer one. And what I would do is just add... Now, you could use your gel pen for this. You know, I'm just a fan of the Posca. And I'm going to add a few little highlights on my fur cone. And then I'm actually going to add a white dot on my berries, a couple on my leaves, look. But also, where the um, berries are on the holly, I'm just going to add a little bit of white. Now, for me, this is going to be more like mistletoe berries. Just, I don't want to add any more red in there because I think there's enough. 
and I think that white just lifts it don't you and again it almost looks a bit snowy so to make it look even more snowy in with the big Posca and we'll just add some flicks yeah happy with that let's wipe them off my craft mat because yes we've got them all over but again if you were batch card making these you would just flick right across the, the lot of them now the sentiment the, the little I've got the word faith on my finished one now that comes from where's my stamp gone I think it's called Christmas Blessings and look how well used mine is. And it's got the words Christmas, peace, love, hope, faith, joy, um, angels and blessings on. And what I tend to do is on scraps of paper, I will just stamp them out again and again. And then I just cut the odd word I want. So obviously this one had faith on. Well, let's just go for this. And there's such a nice spacing. I love just putting odd words. So let's just cut hope out of this. And again, for batch card making, just through sort of one stamping on a scrap of paper, you've got, what, maybe six words? But, I mean, you could put two together. You could have Christmas and blessings, couldn't you? So we're going to add hope on this. And you could leave it like that, but for me, that just stands out a bit much. So I'll take my smoothie. I don't need to add any more ink on. There's enough ink on there already. And let's just grab for speed a couple of sticky pads. And now we could add hope. I think for this one we're going to put hope up here. And then we'll add some, some string. Again, just for that nice earthy feel. Now the Posca is a bit wet, so... Again, and again for me I buy gardening string because it's like everything if you buy craft string often just because it has the word craft in front of it it's expensive but if you buy gardening string it's not it's bizarre and what I'm going to use is um, very lucky we moved into this house a couple of years ago and in the garden um, is a bush well actually it's at the back of the, the garden it's not in our garden it comes over the fence um, but it's just onto fields um, and it has these lovely fir cones which fall off into my garden thank you very much so I collect them and I'm thinking how lovely they're gonna look on here so these are from last year so I collected them so I'll just break the bits off let's get rid of those put my finished one and we're just gonna have one I always look for different types of embellishments we've got a I don't want those today I'm thinking just one of these and often if you buy a group of little berries like this and then just cut them off as you need them helps spreads the cost out saves money and what we're going to do is get some pin flare and what we'll do first is just pop the oh, that was a bit of bungee bit of pin flare we don't want that just get rid of that Let's have a proper bit of pin flare, that's better. Have you started your Christmas cards yet? What were you now, beginning of September? I'm sure some of you have. I bet some of you probably finished them, haven't you? <laughs> now what I'm going to do is get my Posca again and just add... Just think, this A lightens it up, but B, like I say, it's almost like it's snow. So... A bit of and again there's no rhyme or reason for how much just and if you do it quickly you won't overthink it and then let's see that's we'll put that one on first again I'm not going to overthink this I'm going to put three on again we like odd numbers don't we so we'll put one there next one remember to put your glue on the opposite side to where you've put your Posca that one there and then the third one and again this will dry overnight but it will be solid and then lastly put a little bit on our berry just pop the berry in there 
and remember with your pin flare squeeze it up so you've got a raised bit and then you won't get air in so it won't go off the last thing you just need a bit on there so I'm just gonna yeah lovely I'm gonna clean my pokey tool because again I don't want that to be sticky clean up my white Posca Flex this is worth doing now if you wanted some glitter obviously you could add glitter but I just didn't want to for these I wanted to keep them quite almost natural and earthy if I move my things out of the way so can you see hopefully there you go as quick as that we've got two lovely tags now while I'm with you while you're sipping your coffee and eating your cake I just wanted to say thank you to the lovely lovely crafters that have joined in with my online workshops you know it's lovely all you have to do is email me I'll put my email on here and um, drop me an email and what happens is I'll send you the link and um, they're only six pound paid by PayPal they're at least an hour and what we do is we go through and we'll do it like a proper workshop so I record all the videos but they are done so you can join in in real time as a proper workshop and you can play them as many times as you want you can join in as many times as you want and when you're ready for the next one just drop me an email and I can send you the next one and so far, I'll pop these out of the way just to give you an idea of what we've been going through. And it's so lovely. A couple of ladies have actually signed, it, signed in for 10. So I've got my work cut out there. I'm going to have to get 10 done. So our first one, we're creating, we do some lovely blending, go through all the techniques of blending. And we've got some hidden look, some hidden writing there. So we go through all about that. As I say, we spend a good hour creating these. And then for our second design, we're going to go into more. We've got some stencil work. We're going to do some landscaping. Obviously, we've got some glitter in this one. Lots of hints and tips. So that's our second one. The third one, we're going to get the gel press out. Again, if you haven't got a gel press, don't worry. I use the circular one, but you can use the square one. You can use any size you want. It's all hints and tips about getting these backgrounds, your stamping, and the next one, good old, a little bit like we've done today, we're going to create a Christmas wreath and that's purely with stamping. You don't draw around anything, you can create that just by using your stamp. And then we've got this lovely edging again. Did enjoy that one. And then we're going to make a meadow. So a workshop using a little bit of brayer in, but just using your stamps and we're going to create this lovely meadow design. And as a bonus for that, you also we're going to create a nice landscape and a portrait so we're going to get a bit of a twofer in that last workshop and I've got another one to record tomorrow so like I say I do thank you lovely ladies and gentlemen for joining in with me and having faith in me and it's lovely to have the feedback that you do get a brew and craft along with me and hopefully it inspires you and a few of you have actually made other projects as well carried on and done the project again with another colour or other stamps you don't need the same stamps as me don't need the same ink pads as me you just craft along with what you've got anyway enough rabbiting by me thank you very much for joining me it's always such a pleasure to have a catch up with you i do hope you're feeling well Thank you to those lovely people who emailed me about Jensen, my little grandson. He had um, scarlet fever. He's tons better, thank you. Um, his brother fell a couple of days after and cut his head. So he ended up in hospital. So we had to look after Jensen, but they're both okay now. But thank you for your concern and, and your good wishes and blessings. Um, I do appreciate it. And I send them all back to you in bucket loads. Okay, take care, everybody. Love and hugs. Bye for now.